So, one of the things we do at TAD Summit and have done since its beginning is show stuff. Not just slideware, but actually show stuff, real stuff working and showing real stuff that's never been done before. So, we had yesterday the Innovation Showcase led by uh, Data Art, and you got to see a whole range of different uh, demos across basic infrastructure through to uh, interesting services that raise uh, when we're looking at uh, security and privacy around the ATP, ATP bots, whether that should be provided as a service as we see in the banking industry. So um, what we've got coming up now is the Money Innovation Showcase uh, led by the inimitable James Bodie. So James, over to you. My microphone, there we go, my microphone works. So come in, everybody. This is the bit that you've all been waiting for. So, was it four years ago that I stood up on a stage and said uh, the immortal words that those people who can do things, demo them. Those people who can't do PowerPoint presentations. Well, I'm not going to do you a PowerPoint presentation because it's on Google Slides. Um, but if I say that not everything went quite to plan, you'll understand what I mean. Um, but more of that later. So I'm going to talk to you about multi-operator, neutral host, um, well, LTE today, uh, 5G tomorrow. And I'm going to give you a whole load of information to get you all revved up and excited about it. And hopefully, at the end of this, you're all going to go, 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 going to go rushing out, and you'll want to go off to Acceleran and buy a, an E1000 small cell and run your own LTE network at home or in the office. So let's see whether I can convince you to do that. Um, We've already heard this term, I think, a number of times over the last two days, private network operator. Uh, back in 1999, uh, we saw the, the emergence of a, a new term, the MVNO. And this year, it's, this year's buzz term is the private network operator. A PNO is somebody who's not a mobile network operator, but has their own radio access network and bits and pieces. So. Why am I so excited? Well, it's because LTE and 5G, which is coming, is so much better than Wi-Fi. In fact, Wi-Fi is pretty pants. But it d does have one really good feature, and that is it's reasonably easy to set up. LTE is not. Um, and we're going to go through all the things that will stop a normal person from setting up um, LTE. Uh, and uh, my objective today is, well, my global objective this year is to make setting up and using private LTE networks as easy as deploying a Wi-Fi access point. And uh, I can see there are a number of people from operators in the, uh, in the audience <laughs> going, ha, ha, he's mad. OK, um, well, perhaps I'm not quite so mad because there's a whole load of stuff changing and already changed and changing now, which actually makes the impossible possible. So the problems are becoming less of a problem. One of the big things that's changing is that um, you don't have to go out and buy big lumps of proprietary monolithic stuff that sits in a 19-inch rack somewhere and costs something like uh, $100,000 per lump. Um, that's a very kind of old-fashioned concept now. Uh, and we're, what we're seeing is that all the core components you can get in software uh, versions now, um, uh, which means greatly reduced cost. You can throw them out there very, very quickly. You can deploy them at a drop of a hat. And what that means is that you end up with massive scalability. And you remember the, the dangerous demo we did two years ago here, I think. Was it here? Yeah, yeah. Um, where, we, uh, where we scaled up to, well, we're aiming to get to 100,000 concurrent calls by the end of the demo. Uh, we didn't quite make it. We only got to 86,000, but I think it proved the point. Um, and you can develop your, um, your applications extremely quickly, which is great. Oh, and then there's open source. Uh, I, I mentioned... Uh, uh, 
Kama Elio, which is one of our key bits of open source to a, a, a vendor of proprietary software. And he immediately said, oh, it won't scale and you won't get the support. And I'm thinking, mm, I think we will. So, so that's changing. Now, Spectrum. Now, this is a biggie. Spectrum is probably the number one thing that stops most people from becoming a mobile network operator. Why? Because the MNOs uh, have paid huge amounts of money, billions of dollars and pounds and euros, to secure all of the usable mobile spectrum. But things are changing. Um, oh yeah, without spectrum, you can't become a, a member of the GSMA, and without being a member of the GSMA, you can do not very much. Um, but a uh, number of things going on. Shared Smart shared spectrum management uh, is coming. Um, LSA in the States, DSA here in Europe and everywhere else. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. We've got um, secondary use on a non-interference basis. This is a new thing that's coming out of UK now, where uh, the mobile network operators have been told, instructed to cover the rural parts of the country. They have failed. And so, as a direct result of that, uh, other people, can't think who that could be, are being offered secondary use of the same spectrum for low power use on a non-interference basis. Um, then there's license-free operation, multi-fire, more of that later. And then we've got um, operators who are willing to share their spectrum with, with other people. Um, particularly when they're covering difficult to reach places where the operators really don't want to go. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're running small cells, the chances are you, you will very shortly be able to get spectrum and it won't cost you anything, particularly if you're in buildings. The cost of the, and the availability of spectrum is directly linked to the likelihood of you interfering with anybody else. So if you're only running tiny amounts of power and you're in a building, then you're going to get spectrum. Um, LSA and DSA, um, do I need to talk about that because I need to go quickly. So basically, um, uh, both LSA and DSA work a little bit like DHCP but for spectrum. So you turn on your cell, it uh, has a quick scan around, goes off to the server and reports its location, what its operating parameters are and what it can, what, what it can hear. Uh, and then based upon that information, what it has in its database, the, the SAS will then issue a lease for a chunk of spectrum for a period of time. Uh, it's, it, but so it is licensed ac access, but it's for short periods of time. Um, yeah, OK. Now, I'm not going to go through this. This is a list of all the spectrum that is coming into our grips to play with. There's a lot of it. The uh, slide will be, slides will be available for download uh, later. But there's so much of this stuff. And if you can't get one, there are other bits. Um, so, um, yeah, we've got, we've got Spectrum in, in UK and we're looking for more. Um, but anyway, that, that, that slide will be um, downloadable. Next tricky bit, identity and authentication. Um, and of course, the way the, the mobile industry does authenticity, uh, uh, identity and authentication is with these things, a SIM which contains a whole load of stuff there. I'm not going to, not going to read it out because you can read. Um, it's a common fa um, mistake. People think that the little plastic thing um, um, that you put in your phone is the SIM, but that is not the SIM. The SIM is actually the stuff that's on the plastic thing, um, the code and the data, the keys that are on it. Um, so there we are. Um, and these days, we're seeing more and more of these, multi imsy sims. This is one that I had a bit of a hand in. Um, normally, uh, an operator sim will have one single imsy, one identity, because it doesn't need more than one, because it, it only attaches normally in one kind of mode. But um, if you have multiple imsies, then you can pick the most appropriate uh, um, IMSI to, to connect to the network, um, which gives you um, both lower cost normally and better quality. 
Um, yeah, and the really advanced ones support multiple sets of crypto as well. Again, why would a normal SIM need multiple sets of crypto when it only has to authenticate to one HSS? But if you're authenticating to multiple HSSs, then you, you want multiple sets of crypto. Uh, lots of tricky stuff going in, on in there, but uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, multi -MZ. Um, it's a bit like James Bond's Aston Martin DB4 with a rotating number plate. So imagine James Bond driving down the road, he goes across the border and he presses his button and the number plate flips and he goes from being something to something else. And so he's always local. So he gets the best possible attachment and best possible price. Um, yeah, and, a, and the sim development um, continues. This is one that I prepared earlier. And this is what we've been trying to use for our, our demo. But, uh, but Gary, saying nothing, I managed to miss one key bit of information out of my SIM cards. And so we're, we're running with slightly different SIM cards, courtesy of Gary from Acceleran, for the demo. Um, so that was almost a very, very major crash and burn. Um, yeah, it does all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, one of the most interesting things coming up putting blockchain onto the SIM card. So the SIM card, which has its own processor, by the way, uh, and can run independently of the handset, can actually um, run blockchain and effectively do settlement in the cloud. Not a good time to be an operator if you've invested in huge billing systems, if you've suddenly got blockchain on the SIMs. So, OK, let's talk about the IP multimedia subsystem. Um, who was it? Uh, Patrice put up a slide which looks remarkably like this. And everybody goes, oh my god, my brain is going to explode. Um, because it's made to look complicated. It's designed to frighten people off. And it's not really that complicated. Because when you uh, dig below the surface, you find that IMS really is only SIP. And those of us who are VoIP people really like SIP anyway, and we've been doing it for years. Uh, and diameter. So two protocols doing virtually everything. And I mean, it's not that complicated, honestly, guys. And about, what, 50, 60% of that is all done by Kama Elio, which is open source. Wow, there's a revelation for you. And you operators, how much are you paying Ericsson and Nokia for your gear? Um, OK, other things that will stop you from becoming a, uh, an MNO. The procedures, having to leap through hoops. Uh, and the industry, the MNOs, have got a mechanism to, to, uh, to slow people down. It's called the GSMA. And the only way that you can get access to the, uh, the, all the bits and pieces you need is to be a full member. And to be a full member, you have to have Spectrum, which normally means you have to pay billions of dollars and... It's difficult. But there are ways of getting around this, as people like Gareth Hamer here knows. He finds little bits of spectrum in little islands in places. And with that, you can become a full member of the GSMA and get access to the fabled IR21s. So a lot of complexity in this. It's not technical, but it's brain damage. Isn't it, Callum? It is. Um, right. How are we doing for time? Dangerous demo time. What are we going to do first? Right, um, I'm going to give you a bit of history. Um, this dangerous demo has been evolving over the years. It started off just after the very first TAD summit when we had a, an online discussion. And we came to the conclusion that it wouldn't it be good if we actually had a mobile network that we could actually put a lot of these TAD applications on top of and kind of show them off. And so lots of people said, no, you can't do it. And when the people say, you can't do it to me, it, it really makes me want to do it. And so the following year in Istanbul, we put together this demo with uh, you, uh, us, um, I was at Truefone then, Canonical, Telestax, and Metaswitch, and we built a mobile network. And it kind of blew everybody away, apart from the two guys from Ericsson sitting in the front row who thought it was really bad. Um, the following year, we made it big, 
and we added multiple network apps. Uh, was it 14 or something? In fact, the, that YouTube video, which has had all the hits, is actually that demo. So that's where we had all the, uh, the TAD apps on top of it, plus that, that wacky scaling thing, plus a few other things. Um, oh, what's his name with his internet fridge and running around with a, with a drone that he was threatening to take people's heads off with. It was a, it was a wild and wacky demo. And so if you want to see something amusing, that's well worth a view. Um, the following year, last year, in fact, we decided, you know, we're, we're going to put some radio access on this. We'll put some RAN on here because we've got everything else. Uh, just to prove that we can do RAN as well. Um, that didn't work out quite so well, I have to say. Uh, we used Lime Micro software-defined ra radio cards, which we learned very quickly are not quite ready for prime time deployment or even a dangerous demo. So that was a bit... Um, so this year... We decided to come back and do the RAN bit properly. And over to my right, your left, sitting on there, is a, an, an Acceleran E1000, which you'll get to know quite well shortly. Um, so the next thing to do is to tell you what we originally planned to do with this demo. So we were going to do all the stuff that we've done, done in previous things, but then add the production-ready 4G radio access uh, with a complete live IMS backend. And when I say live, all the way back into the PSTN to allow us to, to authenticate Romas. And then what we're going to do is sabotage the in-building repeater system, and then all of your phones would end up on our network, as long as we can authenticate you. <laughs> but, yeah, unfortunately, um, my right hand, my, my glamorous assistant, Andy Smith, um, in order to get out of, um, out of engineering everything, managed to have a heart attack last week in Southampton General Hospital. He's still there. So we didn't quite get the, um, the DSX, the diameter signaling uh, exchange, bit sort of. We got the, got the messaging going, but we didn't get the diameter in time. So it will come back. Don't worry, it'll come back and haunt you. In fact, we're planning to do the same demo at Small Cell World Summit in San Jose, if, if you're going to be there. So that's what we're going to do. Well, we've, but we'll show you what we've got working. We've got bits of it working. Uh, I now need to introduce the other members of the Dangerous Demo team. So from Acceleron, we have Mr. Gary Thomas, who is expert in all things small cell. Uh, and from the summer networks hiding somewhere, we have the indomitable Miguel. So summer networks are providing the incredibly feature-rich HSS that gives us all the knobs and twiddly bits that we need to do, all the, do the fun things that we want to do. I have never seen an HSS as well featured as uh, the Summer Networks one. It is awesome. But, uh, but remember, I'm in the queue before all these people, okay? Um, and, and it's gonna shortly grow a PCRF as well, a policy control research, yeah, one of those, which you probably need. Quite a, quite a bit. And then the uh, last member of the team, last but not least, is the indomitable Carsten Bock. <laughs> now, Carsten's role here is building the, the IMS core. And you probably noticed, we mentioned it a couple of times before, we've got this marvellous little bit of open source software called Camaelio in there. It used to be called OpenSir before that uh, SIP Express router. Uh, we've been using it for years, and believe me, it does scale. It's incredibly reliable. So I always tell people, if you, if you take out a contract to, uh, for somebody to come and build your, your camera Elio, don't take out the, 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 the support, because you don't need it. It, it just never crashes. It's just brilliant. So, so forget the support. Live dangerously. I do. Um, okay, so what are we going to show? Oh, yes, this is, this is the configuration we've got-ish. So at the front end, we've got one or more um, E1000 radios, remarkably like that one there. And again, it's a, it's a super bit of kit. We'll, we'll talk about it later. 
Um, that has the, uh, an embedded process, an, an octo-core processor. Am I allowed to mention the name? Yes? Yeah, Cavium processor, um, which allows you to run a complete Evolve Packet Core, EPC, on there with all those bits in it. So um, your, your cell at the front end actually has a complete mobile network-ish on board which means you can do all kinds of interesting things with it. You can also run apps on the edge, but more of that later. Uh, we're then running it through, back through uh, an aggregator um, so that we're then presenting one single S6A, sorry, this is, this is techie talk, an S6A diameter link back into our main core, which is back here, where we've got all these other bits and pieces. Just for interest, uh, SMSC, Telestacks again. Thank you, Amit, for that one. HLR, HSS is Summer Networks, um, and the other bits and pieces come from various other places. Uh, we then uh, run Diameter and SIP, so the complete IMS works, S6A, S8, S8, S9, and all the other bits, out of the back end of that into an undisclosed lo uh, location or locations, which I'm not going to tell you about. So... Gary, come up here, get, you, get your microphone. We're going to do this because Gary's a bit shy. So we're, gonna, so we're just going to do this in kind of interview format. Hello, Gary. Hello, we're going to talk about, you're talking to your microphone. We're going to talk about your Acceleron cells. So I see they do both TDD and FDD. Yes. Um, Tell us about them. The E1000 prod product range um, co covers the TDD, FDD range. Um, the, the bands you, you see up there and any other bands which are on request, because I know there's a big request coming in from James or, or the... Yeah, yeah those are the bands that are available today, aren't they? Yes. Uh, but uh, Acceleran yeah. can produce hardware in other bands. We know this because uh, we're having a batch made in band 20. Yes, folks, 800 megahertz. Good stuff. Um, so what do we got here? So not very much power output from this. Yeah, um, 24 dB, um, 250 milliwatt from each, each port, um, two by two MIMO. But the, the, the configuration can be configured up to about five kilometers plus, depends on the... Yeah, indeed. And so actually in our configuration, we, we, we have a planning range of about 500 meters to get into a house allowing about 20 dB to get into the house. Um, and if you're outside, it's about 1.1, 1.2 kilometers is our planning range. One of the advantages of running low power is your chances of interfering with anybody else are actually pretty small. And the other great advantage is you can get to reuse the same lump of spectrum many, many, many times. So your aggregate throughput that you can get through uh, a pile of these, uh, these small cells is much larger than you can get through a, a macro cell or, or a metro cell. So what else can we see? Integrated GNSS, explain what that is. Right, uh, for, for the TDD cells, um, it's crucial to get the timing correct. So it's, it's got an integrated GPS unit with inside the E1000 and the, the earlier models didn't have that and it proved to be very, very difficult to yeah. So, so it's, it's essential to have a good timing reference, and, and this is what, what's integrated in the system. So just recapping that again, it's got built-in GPS. So you no, know, you don't have to bother bolting on external GPS units, unlike some other cells that are out there on the market. That's right, James. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. No, we like this. It's it's really convenient, uh, and in fact, it means that we can actually install these. With, um, with a TV antenna installation man. He's doing all our installs for us. So what else? PoE in injection? So yeah, PoE, um, low, low power, e easy to install, and it's just a 56 volts so, um, yeah. converter from, from the mains, uh, ma mains power outlet. Yeah, what's uh, the power consumption of these? Not very much, is it? No, very low. Very low, yeah, very low. <laughs> very low. Uh, and it's waterproof, of course. So you bolt it on the chimney or wherever and, uh, and just leave it there. It's Reasonably bomb-proof, isn't it? Yeah. 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 OK, <laughs> moving on. Let's talk about the embedded EPC. What can you tell, tell us about that? 
Well, these, there's uh, two formats. We can either embed the EPC within the E1000 itself or have the external e EPC. Yeah, but obviously, if we're bolting them to uh, chimneys, we quite like the embedded bit. Uh, also, um, in addition to all the EPC stuff, if you have your own specialized applications, like a, uh, an LBS-based app, you can run that on the edge as well. So really, really, really powerful. Um, so yeah, there are different uh, vendor options, aren't there, for the EPC? Oh, y yes. I mean, over the past couple of years, we've integrated with probably 15 plus EPC okay. um, suppliers. Yeah, so today so, we're using Quartus, and Quartus is the you know, default setting that everybody tends to use. But there are other vendors, um, which um, depends, depends where you're, how you want to deploy it, that you'll, you'll choose something. So we've got interfaces, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I have to press the button. Um, yeah, neutral host. We like the neutral host. Yeah, this is your In fact, in fact, I'll just turn my, I'll just turn my microphone off. How did I do that? Have I turned it off? Did you mute it? Oh, yeah, I'm back again. There we are. It's okay, NT. Don't panic. Don't panic. So, actually, this particular radio could have been built for us. We like it a lot. Um, note, there's a, I see there's a, an E1 4000 version coming out that does Moran. But who's going to buy that? Anyway, moving on swiftly, because that, that, that gag f fell on deaf ears. Uh, it's got all the usual OAM. OAM stands for? Operational Admin. Uh, Ad admin and, uh, and maintenance. maintenance, that's it. Um, and then some so people put a couple of other letters on the end, and I can't remember what they are. But it's how you make it all work. Isn't yeah, it? and I'm from this, like we said earlier, it's easily deployable, um, easily manageable, so you can, there's a, there's a web GUI on it, so you can get directly out of the box. And it's, we it's were, yeah, we were going to show that, weren't we? Yeah, we yes, we can do yeah, that. Yeah, but we've, we kind of forgot to do that. But, but it's, it's a web interface, and you can configure everything. Yeah, it's remarkably or, easy. Or um, if, for the, the larger companies, if they've got ACS systems, they use the TR69 protocol. Yeah. Um, to control it, or as an MP. Yeah, super. Uh, I've let, yeah, let's, let's look at some deployment cases. So, what's this say? I don't understand that. A thousand yeah. pounds, or oh, E1000, I thought it said a thousand pounds. I need to get my glasses, I was going to think, oh, that, that's good value for money, isn't it? Or a thousand euros, that would be very good value for money. But, uh, but they're a little bit more than that, aren't they? This week, but the prices are going down. Speak, speak yeah. to my colleagues. Yeah. Well, if I continue to plug them like this, they're, they're bound to go down. Um, so this is a trial that your guys did. Yes. Yeah, so, so from the E1000, is very flexible, so it can be used in different scenarios. So in particular, this or, um, for this one described here is a rural um, deployment, and this is what I was saying. We we done some trials and. Uh, Getting get the data um, at five kilometres from the from, from the yeah, mast. and that's on band 43. So band 43 is up at 3.5 gigs. Yes, yeah, it's quite high. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and it's only uh, 21 yeah. dBm as well. So even lower power than ours. So we're going to be running more power on a much nicer frequency. Yeah. So, so, so Sorry, did I go yeah. too fast? No, no, that's fine. That's the this rural, one. rural deployment, and then the um, suburban trial. This was, was another trial we had where uh, it's much, much more dense, sort of um, C CPEs yeah. placed cl closer to the cell. And now, the sharp eyed people will probably notice that you've got this kind of thing going with BAM 43, haven't you? It, in particular. Um, and why is that? Well, Acceleron has sort of spotted uh, a niche market. And Which is? I'm feeding you the questions the here. TDD market. Or, yeah, it's, or, it's CBRS. So it's the, yeah. uh, the license shared access band, which is now um, available in the States. So you, if you've got a, a radio that talks the right protocol to the SAS, which strangely enough, yeah. this strange little device actually does that, then uh, you, can, you can get spectrum from the SAS. So yeah, and that's readily available on band 48, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so that's the significance of that one. And I think that's it. You, you did well. A round of applause for Gary for being very brave. 
Right. Thank you. It's Miguel's turn. Now, do you need me to feed you questions? You probably don't want no, me. Because I think I can manage. I think you can. You're a big boy. So I'll, I'll sit on the side and uh, I'll shut up. If you say anything wrong, I'll correct you, though. Yes, please. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Miguel, the CTO of, uh, and CEO for uh, Suma Networks. Um, so uh, a few years ago, we met uh, some uh, MBNOs, and uh, one of it is James. And uh, if you talk to an MBO, you can see that they have uh, wild ideas and dreams about having multi, multi, multi. So <laughs> we normally call it the multi crap, okay? Because they want almost any single configuration on the system. They want to be as flexible as they can. So multi MC roaming in different countries with different MSSDNs, it was absolutely crazy. And at that time, uh, we had VoiceWorks as one of our customers, mm -hmm. and they said, well, our Tegelec HLR is doing end of life, and we need a replacement. Can we build one? And we said exactly the same. Yes. Why not? <laughs> well, we had to dig into the three BP specs. They are quite funny, uh, even better than the GSMA. Yeah, ours are fun. And, um, well, the results are that uh, we were able to build a full HSS HLR with all the multi-crap, okay? I, we're gonna see a little bit the, the web so you can see more or less how the system works. Um, obviously, the idea is that we continue on the path of adding more um, elements into the core network based on this technology that we have, okay? We're talking about a, a, a Movisense or Telestax uh, Giantly deployment with all the resource adapters So we are using the uh, sleep because we've been working with them for almost 10 years now. Yep. So we are pretty comfortable on their capabilities and their uh, stability. Uh, we have customers now live with the system that it's uh, running. We don't have to worry about it. I can sleep at night perfectly because I know the system works perfectly. Now, I'm going to have to hurry you on, but yeah, please. Uh, highlighting software only telecom carrier. That is significant. So no big 19-inch appliances that sit in racks and cost a, a fortune in maintenance. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we want to uh, move all the elements into the uh, solver defined network. Yeah. OK? So what is it? HSS for LTE, for IMS, and HLR, uh, with the CAIR grade. It's got uh, an EIR in there as well. Useful little, little yeah. component, the EIR. We are adding the ball Wi-Fi, the interfaces. So we keep adding interfaces and features uh, because, as I said, all of you guys, they want to have the latest and uh, more interfaces and more things. 3GPP released 13th, uh, roaming controls, everything is included in the product. So within one web GUI, you can control all the system. A flexible license model. For that, you need to ask Javier on the other side. I'm dealing with the technical part. Uh, run some VMware, open stack, uh, physical service, anything you want. It's a software based, so you can run it. And obviously, you have a nice API to control it. And because we are running on this lead, you can integrate it with applications running on this lead. Okay? So you can enrich your system. Um, so, what we say is um, you can have an HSS. If, so, if you're an MBNO, don't be afraid of these uh, big trees, uh, diagrams with many things, it's easier. So, yeah, no, so you can have an HSS of your own, okay? Right, press Let's the button, press the button. Quickly on the... Yeah, on let's the have a look at the HSS. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Within about two minutes, just looking at a, at, a, at a front end, you go, wow, that's fully featured. And that's, I think, is what we're going to get. Perhaps. On a good day. That's a live demo. Come on, what do you want? Blood? Ah, I don't believe it. Well, we, we, we've got, got the next... Look at that command line. Great. Yeah, what what, we are, what skills? Server. Miguel, you're good, good. Um, <laughs> do you need a couple of moments because we can skip on to the next bit of the demo. Um, right, we're going to show you uh, a couple of iPhones um, which are running through the cell whilst Miguel's um, doing things with... Where's the video gone? That one. We're going to show you uh, an iPhone which is working through that cell. We were going to do all kinds of things like not only hijacking your phones, but 
uh, running a full suite of services. Right, if, we, if we're very lucky, this iPhone will come up on screen. You probably got the password there as well, didn't you? Okay. So, microphone, tell us what we've got here, Gary. Talk us through it. Right. Um, what we got is the E1000, which, as I said, is a very, very good product. We've got the core network, and we've got two iPhones connected to it. Not the one, but two. So what, what we can dem demonstrate is the is a speed test, uh, but, but typically for, for these, the theoretical speed is over 100 megs per second. But okay, not, not so, it yeah. so we're running band 40 TDD, uh, 20 megahertz waveform, oh, sorry, yeah. so we would expect uh, about 100, 150 megabit per second? 106, I think. 106, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to be precise. That's what I love about Gary. He's great, isn't he? <laughs> right, so we're... Uh, and then this is uh, being terminated out of the back end of the EPC directly onto the hotel Ethernet. Yeah. So <laughs> what speed do you think we can get out of this, uh, out of this iPhone? Yeah, I know. It's coming back. Don't look at the password. Right. Can you kick, kick it off, or shall I yeah, kick it yeah. off? Just, just refresh the... That one. Yeah, yeah. Right, what speed? That's right. Oh, it's, it's coming up, so we're getting... That's not very impressive. Only 35 megabit per second, Gary. That's rubbish. <laughs> well, it is a live demo, but... Well, 34 yeah, yeah, megabit yeah, per yeah. second on your own cell, I mean, it's, it's good. Should we try that again? It might go fast a second time. Are you there, Miguel? Almost. Almost. Okay, we'll, we'll keep padding yeah. for you. Uh, and uh, just to prove that it's not a, a, a thing, we can do the same thing on the other one at the same time, because we're that kind of demo crew. Yeah, we we do multiple um, data sessions at the same time through our own LTE network. Believe me, it's nowhere near as good as what we were going to do with your phones, though. But anyway, next year... So anyway, that works. Uh, you will note that uh, the network we're running, 23488, uh, and that, that those of you who are really quick, like Alex Kinch, will have already gone off to the Ofcom database and looked that up and said, ooh, that, one, that, 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 that range hasn't been issued yet, but it, it's reserved for us. So we, we had to build the SIM cards before we, um, before we had the, uh, the IMSI range. Was that a good demo? Well, it's an OK demo, wasn't it? Yeah, it's an end-to-end -end demo, but... Um, uh, and is Miguel still sweating? Because... He's still sweating. But we will yeah, get yeah, there. Yeah. So let's switch swiftly to Carsten, okay. who... Oh. It's going to take me 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, well, introduce yourself, Carsten. OK. Um, just let me start with a quick question. Who of you in the audience knows the Kamali Zip proxy? Okay, that's quite a few. Well, it can be. Who of you have ever deployed a Kamal user proxy? Okay. And now the last and final question. Um, who of you ever made a call going through a Kamal user proxy? A call. It a call. Well, the signaling goes through. The kind of exactly. Way, but, but the, the, the signaling. Doesn't. And I guess uh, those of you... Um, who didn't raise their hands uh, didn't simply didn't notice because, uh, um, like like uh, we see, if for example, if you're in Germany, uh, I know that several big vendors uh, are using Camalio um, just for interconnecting services, just for voice termination services. So I guess that basically everyone here in the audience has made a call going through Camalio. Camalio is a Open source zip proxy, and um, I have some slides on that. <laughs> Just waiting for Miguel to start. Um, Come on, pad, pad, pad. <laughs> okay. How are we doing for time, <laughs> Alan? Um, okay, let's go. Okay. Um, the Camaglio zip proxy was originally developed by the Fraunhofer Institute of Berlin. And it was originally called the Zip Express Router. The Zip Express Router as a project was later forked into OpenZero, 
which was later again evolved due to trademark issues into the Camaleo project. So that's gripping. Let's talk about some of the things that yeah. you're doing okay. with, uh, with NG Voice and real <laughs> live deployments, because you haven't got that one. Well, you have got them on your slide. Exactly. Well, let's talk about it anyway. Exactly. Um, what we did some basically seven years ago was um, that we took another project of the Fraunhofer Institute, which is the Open IMS Core. Some of you may be aware of that project. And we merged that into the Camaleo project. And um, uh, the goal was really to make an open source IMS core available, which is stable, which is fast, which is really ready for production. Because uh, the open IMS core by the Fraunhofer Institute, well, it was a search and uh, a, a research project, so it was not really, it was good in a way of standards compliant, but it wasn't really stable and such. So um, good. we, 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 we did a lot of effort in, in, in we, we put a lot of effort into that, and um, um, I can proudly say that uh, approximately by the end of this year, we have approximately 200,000 subscribers running on IMS, on Camaleo, which, okay, maybe isn't too much, but we're growing. I guess by summer next year, we're hitting the million. Okay, press the pause button on Carsten. Uh, microphone to Miguel and press play. Good, quick. So now we are seeing one of the sims that we loaded into the, the HSS, okay? Uh, we have this uh, thing about boxes. We love Matroska things, so one box inside the other. So you can see that we have the sim, the subscriber, so we have all the actions that I can see, so I can change the different values. So if I go inside the IMC, I have the different subscriptions. So because they want to be able to define subscriptions either via the HLR, the LTE, the, the IMS, each one is independent. You can create one subscriber with MSSDN, without MSSDN, with HLR subscription, without it. And then inside it, you have all the information that you need, whether that's the PDP context, the uh, supplementary services, everything. It's defined here. Even, for example, you can have different camel services. Oh, yeah, we love easy. our camel. Exactly. Amazing what you can do with camel, boys <laughs> and girls. So each one of it can be configured independently with the multi-profile. So you have full liberty of defining exactly how you want that specific IMC when you have, when you're doing roaming, mm -hmm. that is going to be the behavior. Okay, obviously we link that into the roaming control so you can define yeah, you've got about exactly. another 20 seconds because I'm going to have to move you on because yeah. you've got more to come. So as you can see, everything is uh, GUI-based. We help, and also we try to help the people that is less uh, knowledgeable with the tool tips, which we get from the GSMA. And it even gives you the link out to the 3 exactly. GPP spec. So uh, if how you good forget about exactly what the 3 GPP is saying, we don't worry, we include the link for you so you can look it up. Brilliant. Thanks. Right. Um, do you, well, do you, you've got a couple more slides. If, do you want to sprint through those? No, there was... Because um, I think whilst we've been talking, Javier's been adding a few extra slides at the back, haven't you? Yep. That's what happens w when you have Google Slides and you share the access. You, all of a sudden, you... Where do I put uh, it the, uh, uh, Yeah, it's underneath that. Can you close that one down? It's present, that yep. one. Yeah. So some of the customers that we have now live the systems. This is in US, Blue Wild is in the US. So uh, webbing. A, this is more, more of an advert than a demo, isn't yes. it? <laughs> anyway, press the button. So, press, so press, the button. press the button. Go on. Oh, you've got more customers. <laughs> oh, partners. And, and so anyway. Maybe you have any doubt. You, uh, you, know, you know where Miguel lives now, so yes. you can give him all kinds of difficult questions. We can go through a more technical session with a little bit more time. Yes, that was brilliant. Thank Thanks. you, Miguel. Right, moving on. Ah, yeah. there you go. And you, you've probably got about two minutes to go through your three <laughs> slides. Now. Okay, so I think uh, I can almost uh, skip this slide because that's okay. basically what I told you already. And uh, having Kamayo as an IMS course really a great thing because um, we've got a great foundation for really everything that uh, speaks ZIP. So we can build the proxy CSFs and integrating basically a lot of bits of pieces that we have uh, in this uh, huge confusing pictures and everything that speaks pure ZIP we can build with Kamali, which is great. 
quite recently, we um, also added uh, all kinds of diameter operations. Uh, of course. Oh no! What? Keep, keep, keep talking. Keep ah, talking. Okay. Um, of, of course, since the beginning, because diameter is a must in IMS, uh, we, we we had all kinds of uh, client applications like. Uh, like we could uh, work with an HSS and um, we could uh, work with charging everything. But uh, quite recently, we also added the server part. So Camaleo now not only speaks zip, but also Diameter, which is totally great because we can build really fascinating stuff out of Camaleo. Yeah. Um, okay. For this project, okay, um, okay, we've press got a button. show. I press the button. What? I'm sorry, I pressed your button. But ah, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> And, and we can even use Kamali for, for various kinds of applications, like uh, all kinds of supplementary services, call forwarding, SMS, anything, which is totally great. Um, Kamali as a project has been used quite a lot. And um, probably the best and well-known biggest deployment is uh, one and one in Germany with more than four million subscribers running on Kamali on an open source project, which is great. And um, over the time, the project has been deployed at various other deployments in all kinds of scenarios. So that really gives us a great rock-solid foundation for our IMS stuff. Yeah, I think you got the message. Camera Elio, he says Camaleo, I say Camera Elio, is really good. Yeah, absolutely, anyway. absolutely. Hey, anyway, round of applause for Carsten, because I've got a gazillion slides to get through very quickly. And hopefully we'll still have a little bit of time for questions at the end, so. Oh, there, and the, uh, you'll be able to... Oh, this is a, this is a, a random, exciting bit. Um, I don't know whether this is going to work. Um, we're going to see whether we can do a live link-up. And this definitely is a dangerous demo. Let's have some sound, perhaps. Are they going to give us some sound? No. Not going to give us anything, actually. I'll tell you what I'll do very quickly. Always keep a reserve, never run out of options. We're going to try it on an iPad. This is what you have to do. You have to have a backup to the backup, just in case everything goes horribly, horribly wrong. Oh, there we go. Sound. Well, that'll be me then. Come on, Andy. He popped up a little bit earlier saying uh, the body snatchers got him and they're dragging him off to get some blood out of him. So. Oh, here he goes. Come on, Andy. Talk to us. Oh, there we are. Mr. Andy Smith. Live from Southampton General. Okay. I, I, I was actually watching the stream then. <laughs> no, no, too long. <laughs> right, well, you, tell us about the uh, engineering the, uh, the diameter out of the back end and why it's not working without giving any trade secrets away. Oh, don't then. I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't hear me. I'm afraid. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, probably because I plugged the, uh, the, the thing in. Uh, anyway, that's Mr. Andy Smith. Just say something. Oh. Speak. 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 You. You. Speak. Well, I, I can't hear what exactly what's going on at all. Um, all I can do is apologise to everyone that, that the demo wasn't there in full. As you can see, uh, my excuse is I had a heart attack and I'm sat here in hospital and yeah. I'm sticking to that one. So thank you. Oh. Well, that one. Can you hear me now? No, because I'm now muted. Well, anyway. Um, I think that's probably enough. Thank you, Andy. It was really good to see you looking so healthy. Make sure they give you more steroids. Okay. okay. You're a caring, caring boss that I am. But I'll tell you what, when they put him on steroids, his, his work rate went through the roof. It's incredible. Right. Gosh, that was, that was, that was dangerous. Anybody who's tried to com communicate out of, a, out of a general hospital knows that's not, not an easy thing to do. Right. Come on. 
Come on, give me my slides back, please. Chrome. Crash, Chrome, Chrome just crashed, didn't it? Did Chrome just crash then? I've seen that website, things that Chrome broke this week, or whatever it is, it's really good. Come on. Just give me my slideshow back, please. <laughs> No, uh, 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 no, it's it's for, forgotten where we were. Presentation. I'm going to have to go back. I have to open a new window. Oh gosh. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll just plug it into my iPad and do it on my iPad. Showing what a resourceful demo person I am. We will overcome. Here we go. Uh, where do I show this? Hospital update, we've just done that. De deployment cases play. Present to external. Play. And please, yes, there we go. Deployment cases. Right, I'm going to hit you with a couple of deployment cases for multi-operator neutral hosts because you might be interested in that. The number one one that uh, we like to talk about is the rural not spot deployment case. Um, we're actively involved deploying between 50 and 70 E1000s into the Chalk Valley, southwest of Salisbury in uh, southwest of England. Uh, it is famous for being the largest mobile not spot in the south of England. And guess who lives right in the middle of it? Yes, you guessed it, it's me. So uh, after we managed to get a government minister fired for the failure of the government-funded mobile infrastructure project, which totally failed to give any coverage in the Chalk Valley, uh, we've decided to be friendly and, uh, and we're helping fix not spots. Now, this is an interesting slide because this is the, the government's definition for what a not spot is. And those are the signal levels that are defined as the signal threshold for having a, a, a semi-workable signal. But if you look at that, you will notice how much better 3G is than 2G. In fact, 10 dB better. But then 4G is 12 dB better than 3G. But then you go on to IoT narrowband, which officially is kind of 5G, albeit very slow, and you see it's a massive 20 dB better than LTE. And this is why we have to kill off 2G and 3G and refarm that spectrum, because the performance you get out of uh, LTE and, uh, and IoT stuff is so much better. Look at the difference in, in that. It's just incredible. So we like LTE. Uh, and and I, what I didn't mention is, what happens if uh, LTE and Wi-Fi go into the ring together? Guess who wins? Well, it's certainly not the, uh, not the Wi-Fi. I had some slides for that, but I took them out because I, I thought they were n not politically correct because they had lady wrestlers on. And, uh, anyway, so this is the sort of thing that MIP, the mobile infrastructure project, was supposed to be putting into uh, the Chalk Valley. Problem is, it is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, in fact, they were supposed to put five of them. So those five down the, the bottom bit, that's the Chalk Valley. Uh, we were supposed to get five of them, and none of them turned up. Um, so our plan is, this is my village in southwest Wiltshire, uh, which we'll cover with something like five or seven uh, E1000s. Um, you note that there is overlap. We are over... over um, what's, it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're putting out more than we need because we're putting them on people's houses and just in case somebody unplugs the cell when they're doing the hoovering, um, you've got to have a little bit of extra. So, But we can do that. So that's, that's one use case. Oh, and by the way, we're, we're looking to take something like 90% of the, of the capital cost of that from the central government. Um, and it still works out at about a quarter of the price of the four MIP uh, macro cells. Uh, another use case, uh, metro underground networks. Uh, this one, I've got, I've got to say uh, metro underground because I'm not allowed to say uh, underground. 
or places. Um, but anyway. Um, A tube, yes. Um, anyway, um, let's talk about some characteristics. What, um, so all of the infrastructure down in the tunnels is owned by the transport operator. And one thing that they are adamant about is they don't want those smelly old mobile network operators down in their tunnels mucking around with their, with their cables because they own and operate everything down there. So they want to put their own infrastructure into their own tunnels, and they're going to do it. Um, and once they've done that, they can then run multiple services for different groups of people. So their own employees, the guys who drive the trains and the, the people who check tickets, I suppose, uh, will be on one net or one, one service using their own SIM cards. Uh, the emergency services will come down and use the network, but uh, using their own SIM cards, authenticating somewhere completely different on the emergency services network. And then we've got all the normal general public who, who just roam onto it. Um, another thing that really interests these people is the fact that you can run a whole load of different mobile edge computing type of apps on the edge. So the sort of thing that they're interested in are things like passenger flows. You can actually track each individual user as they move through the system. And if a train is late and it looks like uh, a platform is going to be overcrowded, they can slow down or stop the escalators like that one in Canary Wharf. Oh, I don't believe I said that. Um, you can also do security tracking. One of the things that you could be looking for uh, would be people who are not making a, a normal journey. They're loitering around or just going in funny directions. And then you can use the information to tee up other, uh, other services. Um, you can give directions to travellers. So, so, I don't know, bomb alert, everybody leave the, the platform now, and you have to go this way. And the directions you give can be specific to where they are in the tube network. Um, and then personalised adverts is another one. So you imagine a guy goes down onto the tube platform. Um, the train is 45 seconds away. Um, so there's just enough time to deliver that guy a personalised advert on the wall in front of him. That's a revenue generator. Anyway, that, that's some use cases. Here's another one, which is... Here is another one. High altitude pseudo satellites. This is a sexy one. Um, these things are solar powered drones which carry our 4G or 5G communication payload, a cell. Um, the current mission pr uh, profile of these things is somewhere between three months and four years. They fly at between 55 and 60,000 60, feet, so above the weather, uh, using uh, lithium sulfur batteries and the latest solar cell technology, which looks like a, like a sweetie wrapper. Um, because it's only 18 kilometers up you, and flying very slowly, you can use a conventional handset th to work through these things. It's line of sight, so it works fine. Unlike low Earth orbit satellites, which are whizzing over um, at uh, about 100 kilometers up, uh, and so you have to deal with all the Doppler, which is a nightmare. Um, there are four leaders there. Two of them actually are British, well, originally. Uh, Pro Project Arkila in Yeovil, about 30 miles away from where I live, has been bought now by Facebook. Um, and that, that is a huge, well, I'll show you it in a moment, uh, aircraft. Zephyr uh, is Farnborough, another British one. That, that's mainly being used for military. And then the American one, Sunfleet Communications Networks. Here are some, some little holiday snaps. This is Project uh, Arkila. Oh, it looks like it's got a video, but I'm not going to show it to you. This thing is enormous. The wingspan of this is one and a half times the wingspan of a Boeing 737. It's enormous. But because it's got such a huge wing era, area, it can stay up for, for, for ev ever. You know, it's, and it can carry a lot of weight as well. So that's the one that Facebook br uh, bought. Um, the, uh, the Farnborough one is called Zephyr. Uh, a couple of variants of it there, mainly military pay payloads, so I'm not going to say anything about that. The American one, uh, this is different. They, instead of flying one, one platform, they fly them in, in gangs of them, typically 10 or 12, and then they spread them out in formation and then use them to do active beam forming. They, they, the 12 aircraft become an active beam forming array, array which is really smart. Um, 
And it also means that if one or two of them get a bit ill, they just bring down the ones that uh, aren't very well, very well and replace them um, without taking down the entire service. And they look kind of like that in action. Right, I think we're done. Whoa. How are we doing for time? You're on spot up. Whoa. Oh, I think that requires a round of applause, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well done, James and team. Have we got time for the inevitable Dean Bubbly question? No. Oh. We're breaking for lunch. Dean, you can ask it over lunch, okay?